before this video starts. For the people who have been following me for quite some time, I am aware that I made two videos with the same subject in the past. This video will be my complete last iteration as in the previous videos, I have left out important details and explanations. So without further ado, let's get started. To get started in creating a smooth character controller, in an empty scene create a capsule object and make the main camera within the scene a child of the capsule object. Once that is done, set the position of the main camera object to be one Y unit off its origin. So it is at the top of the capsule. This is the position that would represent the head. Now on the capsule object you created, add on a character controller component. The capsule object will represent the main player object. Now in your assets, create two new C Sharp scripts, one called player movement and the other called player look. Now in the player movement class, add in the following variables. The move smooth time variable will be used for when we use the vector3.smoothdamp function. The gravity strength variable will dictate the strength of gravity that will be applied. The jump strength variable will dictate the velocity that will be applied when the player jumps. The walk speed and run speed variables is to give us modifiable values when we dictate speeds at which the player will move depending on their sprinting state. The controller variable will store a reference to the attached character controller component so we can utilize the movement functions available. The current move velocity and move damp velocity will both also be used in the purpose of smoothing the player movement. Lastly, the current force velocity variable will mainly be used for the application of gravity onto the player object. So those are the variables. Now in the start function, we will set the controller variable to be a get component call for the controller variable's type, which is the character controller. Now paying attention to the update function, which is a function that runs every frame, we will record the player's input in a vector3 variable using the input.getAxis raw function on the x and z axis. We can get the left right input keys and the forward back input keys. The reason why we are using the getAxis raw function instead of the regular getAxis function is because we are applying our own smoothing onto the movement. With that done, we now need to make sure that our player input vector length is always 1. This needs to be done because it will have the player maintain a constant speed in all input cases. To do this, after setting the player input vector, we will check if its length, aka magnitude, is greater than 1. If it is, then we normalize the vector. Now we need to convert the player input vector to a vector that is relative to our player object's forward. This needs to be done as the player can look around and it would be unnatural if the player was looking 90 degrees to the right, and when pressing their forward key, would proceed to move in the world forward, which would be towards the left when thinking in the player's perspective. So to do this, we will use the transform.transform direction function, and we will store the resulting vector in another variable called the move vector. Now with that done, we need to get the speed at which the player wants to move. In other words, we need to get the speed that reflects whether or not the player is sprinting or not. To do this, we can use the question mark operator using the input.getKey function as the conditional value. Now what we will do is use the vector3.smoothdamp function on our current move velocity variable as it will be the primary vector to move our player. With the smoothing of our current move velocity variable complete, we will now use the move function in our character controller variable to finally move the player with our current move velocity multiplied by time to delta time. The reason why delta time is used is because it will make the player movement constant and smooth regardless of frame rate. With those lines complete, the base movement of the player is complete but jumping and gravity is not implemented. To start with this, using a ground checking rate cast that shoots down for 1.25 units, we will use this to change the current force velocity variable. If the player is on the floor, or in other words, the rate cast detects a collision, then a constant force of negative two on the y-axis will be applied to keep the player on the floor when navigating slopes. We will also add in the jumping functionality by using the input.getKey function to check if the player pressed the spacebar. If the player did press the spacebar, then the current force velocity y-axis will be set to the jump strength. Now in the case where the player is not on the floor, or in other words, the ground check ray cast is not colliding with anything, we will subtract the gravity multiplied by delta time so the player's falling velocity will gradually increase. With those lines complete, we will use the move function again, but this time using the current force velocity variable multiplied by delta time. Once again, delta time is being used to maintain a constant and smooth movement regardless of frame rate. With those lines complete, the player movement class is complete. Now back in Unity, if you add the player movement class to your player object and set the different variables to your desired values, you will have smooth player movement with gravity, sprinting, and jumping implemented. 
Now it is time to add in player looking. To get started in the player look class, add in the following variables. The player camera variable will store a reference to our main camera so up and down looking is possible. The sensitivities vector2 variable will allow for us to customize sensitivity on both left right and up down looking. Lastly, the xy rotation variable will store the rotation angles that will be applied onto the player object and camera. Now in the update function, we will record the mouse deltas using the input.getAxis function to get the mouse x and mouse y deltas. After getting the deltas, we will subtract the mouse input.y multiplied by the y axis on the sensitivities vector to the x axis on the xy rotation variable, and we will add the mouse input.x multiplied by the x axis on the sensitivities vector to the y axis of the xy rotation variable. The reason why we are subtracting x to y and adding y to x is because rotating on the y axis invokes side to side rotation, and rotating on the x axis invokes top to bottom rotation. Also, the reason why subtraction is occurring only for the x-axis is because the top to bottom rotation is inverted when adding. With the math complete, we will limit the top to bottom rotation by using the mathf.clamp function, and we will set the world rotation of the player object to be 0, xyrotation.y 0. We will also set the local rotation of the player camera to be xyrotation.x 0, 0. These assignments make the player object handle side to side rotation and the player camera handle top to bottom rotation. With these lines complete, if you go back into the Unity editor, attach the player look class to the player object, assign the player camera onto the player look class, and set the sensitivities to whatever you please, you will be able to look around your scene and move around smoothly. That is all for this video, like and subscribe for more tutorials and devlogs in the future, and with that said, I hope to see you all in the next video. Goodbye.